The Fantasy Six Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, uh, you're awful. <laughs> and AJ Applegar. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu Chu. It's a mouthful. All right, all right. Welcome back to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me, as usual, my co-host, AJ Applegarth. What's up, man? What up, bro? What up? Uh, not too much, man. Looking forward to the last week, or what should be the last week for everybody, but unfortunately isn't. Uh, mm-hmm. Fantasy football week. Uh before we get going, how do you do in semis? Uh, I actually did pretty damn good. Um, I had three three leagues where I was in playoffs. Cool. Um, two as a six seed, one as the two seed, and then I have one league where I was fighting in the toilet bowl to try to get the first pick. If I win the toilet bowl, that's my work league. Um, we ended up beating the guy in that pretty eh, pretty decently not maybe like 10 15 points um which was great because we knocked him out of the playoffs uh, a couple weeks back in week 12 before we went on this little run of wins so hoping to get one more and finish out the season with five wins and the number one pick um in my home league i was down 40 points just under 40 points going into monday had Michael Thomas and Will Lutz, and <laughs> I took the win by like two point something points. Solid. Um, guy was guy was pretty pissed. <laughs> I would be too, man. Michael Thomas is, dude. It, he that was a ridiculous outing by him. It, he literally place. like I texted him and and our other buddy from the league, and was just like, "Yeah, you getting scared yet?" And I, did, I hadn't even looked at the score like within like the last five minutes. I kind of fell off from watching the game for a minute, and he was like, "It's like, yeah, dude, I, I'm just gonna go to bed. Like, this, this is ridiculous. I had a 35 plus point lead, and it's basically gone at halftime." I was like, "Wait, what?" And I looked at the <laughs> score, and I was only down by five. I was like, "Oh, all right, cool. I'm good with that." So, yeah, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, and then uh, in our league, I I pretty much decimated Richard and. Um, Took the win there to face nice. off against my co-host, Mr. Joe Bond. Yeah, we'll get to that for later. Our, our third fantasy championship match face-off. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that a little later. We'll get into that. Um, so there is no Thursday night game tonight. Uh, kind of feels good to not have to worry about setting lineups on Thursday. I, I pretty much hate having to do that. Um, but there are three games on Saturday, so don't fall asleep. You know, setting your lineups, but also just a little public service announcement. Do not put your Saturday players in your flex unless you're starting three running backs on Saturday and one of them has to be in a flex, I guess. But yeah. like, don't use the flex position on the first guy you're using in the league because that just ruins you. They're, just, just don't do it. Anyway, man, um, let's get to our... Final beer of the week for the season, man. Yeah, that's a shame. Mm, beer. Hi, right, man. So uh, I'll let you go first. What you got? I am drinking a localish beer from Evo, the nice. number six. One of my double favorites, IPA. man. I like that one a lot. It's it's really good. I, I'm sure I've had it somewhere along the lines, but yeah. it's. It's very, uh, uh, it's very like smooth and yeah. easy drinking, but it's also pretty damn strong at eight and a half percent. Yeah, so it definitely is. That's that's trouble, but yeah, it's it's one of my favorites, man. Oh yeah, that's good. I get it, I get it a lot when when there's not a whole lot else in the store. I, I get that one quite often. And I give it a four on Untapped. I don't know what you give it. I have it at four and a quarter right nice. now yeah i probably should have raised it i just haven't yet i just I, I'm it's like what i gave it a long time on maybe it's like, doing uh maybe four and a half but yeah it's what i it's, it's what i gave it a long time ago um 
for whatever reason, and I just keep going back to it, and I just like it more and more. Uh, but what I got this week is a I, I keep finding new true respite beers. Um, this nice. one is called Button and Muffin, <laughs> and the can's pretty funny. It's literally a a button and a muffin drawn like on notepad paper. It's pretty funny looking. Um, nice. Yeah, it's right. uh it's a it's a hazy double IPA. It's brewed with Sabro, S- Strata, and Southwestern Passion Hop. 8.2%, okay. so pretty strong itself, and it's a full pint can, That uh, so this will do me good. I gave it a four and a quarter. Uh, it's it's pretty damn tasty. I'm not going to lie, man. I like it. Awesome. So Yeah, I'll have to try out some of their beers. It's uh, getting some good ratings here on, uh, on the F6P hour beer. I like week, them, so. man. I, I like them a lot. It's, it's good stuff. So... All right, man, so we got a big show, lots of people with lots of questions and, you know, lots to break down. Um, have at it, man. All right, so jumping into the headlines here, we're looking at Chris Godwin went down last week after having a pretty good week, um, you know, before the injury. Uh, he has a hamstring pull as of last week. So now we have no Mike Evans and no Chris Godwin. Oh, by the way, we also don't have Scotty Miller either. Um, Rookie receiver. who has been also dealing with some hamstring injuries of his own. And he uh, was put on the IR. I think Tampa's still trying to feel out Evans and Godwin, you know, rightfully so. Uh, But I mean, what are are we looking at here? Both are done. Evans on IR. Godwin has been ruled out. So done, 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 done. Um, done for this. Well, oh, Evans is IR. Evans too. on okay. IR. Yeah. So they're they're done, dude. Um, and there's pretty much no chance Godwin comes back next week. Like they're they're done no. for the season. So they're not going to risk you know making this hamstring linger into next season. But yeah, I mean it's tough, man. You know a lot of people relying on on Ed, not just Godwin and Evans, right? I mean I'll, I'll tell you, like my semis, we didn't get into that. My semis leagues. Um, I was in. I was in six. I made it out of three. And honestly, it would have been four. But I lost. Um, I lost by like five points. And on my bye week, I lost Evans. And then this past week, I lost Cook halfway through the matchup and still only lost by five points. So, like, I get both of those guys and I smash the person I'm playing probably. So, um, yeah. But anyway, I'm in three. Ours, a dynasty league. And my work league, so pretty good there. Um, I'm looking forward to at least taking one or two of those. Hopefully all three, but, you know, I won't get greedy. Uh, but, yeah, anyway, moving on to this, you know, obviously Godwin and Evans are just massive losses for, for teams, you know, fancy teams. You know, Perryman's probably the one receiver who I really like. You know, he came, he came, came up big. This past week has scored three times. Now, look, you can, you're not going to expect that. Um, you're not even going to expect uh, Winston to throw for four touchdowns again at 450 yards, right? You know, that's just unlikely to happen again. Uh, yeah. But the volume in that passing game is going to be there. Um, you know, Watson's going to have to step up a little bit. Howard's going to have to step up. Brake's going to have to step up. They're talking about throwing to some of the running backs a little more, which – <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I. I don't know if I really believe it because that's just not what Winston does. He just likes to chuck it downfield to his own peril yeah. sometimes because he likes to, th- you know, he'll just throw in the traffic. Uh, sometimes getting, you know, uh, getting a little out of dodge because of Godwin and Evans just being beasts. Uh, I don't know if Perryman and Watson and Howard and them are going to be able to do that for him. But yeah. um, anyway. I don't know. I mean, obviously the big question here is, do we trust Winston? You know, a lot of people have him or were hoping he would be big. He's, he had some phenomenal matchups in the playoffs. Like we mentioned many, many times and yep. he came through big last week against Detroit. He's got another good matchup this week against Houston. Yeah. The defense is better, but he, they still give up like the most area, like the second most air yards to Detroit. So he's still got a great matchup. Uh, yeah. I'm still rolling with him, man. Like unless your other quarterback is like, you know, Lamar or like Patrick Mahomes, something like that, which you weren't starting over Winston anyway. Um, 
I'm going for it. I don't see any reason yeah. why not. I, I I think he can still have a, a big game. And like you said, the volume's going to be there. He's going to throw the ball because they can't run the ball. Um, no, not at all. You know, it's It's been shown. I mean, uh, Rojo's shown some flashes earlier this year, but he tailed off. Barber Absolutely. was never really doing anything. So Absolutely. I mean, I, I could see them potentially getting a little bit more involved in the passing game, uh, but I, I just – I think he's just going to be hitting Perryman all over the place, and and you know hopefully getting some some love to Watson too. Um, so, moving on to our next injury, uh, we're looking at Josh Jacobs being ruled out for this week. Um, he was out two weeks ago as well, and then came back and played last week. Um, you know, he he. he did okay. I mean, he had had a, the lion's share of carries and and almost a hundred yards. But what are we doing now that that Jacobs is officially out? Yeah, I mean, obviously DeAndre Washington, as you can see from the stats here on the screen, you know, week fourteen when Jacobs was out, uh, Washington carried the ball fourteen times as opposed to Jalen Richard seven, uh, caught six targets uh, as opposed to Richard's um, two had seven as opposed to three targets. Uh, got the touchdown, so he's kind of the goal line back too, so if they get down there, they're going to punch it in with him or at least try to. Um, I mean, I, I do I do like him this week. Uh, it's, it's like a low RB2 kind of flex running back. It's, it's not as juicy of a matchup as it was two weeks ago, so that's, that's kind of unfortunate, but I still think... I mean, look, if you lost Jacobs, you're probably not going to have a whole lot of guys behind him that you can rely on um, at this point that are going to be much higher than than Jacobs. I mean, the running back position is just decimated at this point. So, um, you know, I think we can expect, you know, maybe 12 to 14 carries for 50 yards. Hope he punches one in. I don't know if he's going to get six receptions again, but it's it's not totally out of the question either. Yeah. I think that's that's all we can do. I mean, I, I've got him ranked like twenty, like high twenties. I want to say I'm pulling up my rankings now, half PPR, um, and it, and it could go up as as the week comes on. But I've ra- I've got him ranked twenty fifth right now, so yeah, he's kind of in that flux category. Um, but it's tough, man. It's tough to own a bunch of these guys that are up there right now. Yeah, definitely. Um, I like what Washington did the other week, but like you said, it's definitely a, a better matchup to go off of. So next that brings us to Mr. Dalvin cook. He is very unlikely to play. Uh, I believe Indeed. he has shown up as doubtful, uh, on, uh, sleeper. Um, yeah, he was probable as of like this morning. And then all these reports yeah. came out that, you know, Rappaport and, all those guys are saying, you know, it's super unlikely he's going to play. So it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it also hurts because Alexander Madison is the guy that we've been, you know, pimping out this whole year as the, yep. the handcuff to own all season. But he's been out the last two weeks and he's unlikely to play this week now, too. Uh, I believe it's an ankle injury that he's dealing with. Uh, what are we doing with Minnesota? Yeah, I mean, look, Mike Boone came in last week uh, in the second half there and took over 13 carries, 56 yards, and two touchdowns. I mean, I don't know if we're going to bank on two t- I mean, touchdowns are hard to predict regardless, right? Um, yeah. But, I mean, this is a run-first offense, good offensive line. Green Bay, not great at stopping the run. That's how you can beat them. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Man, I thought I was over that. Um, you know, it's it's definitely a, a plus matchup, but you know, again, Boone was the third stringer for a reason, and I think we can, you know, I I have him ranked a few spots ahead of Washington, um, but again, he's he's kind of an unknown guy too. I mean, it's just the matchups there, the opportunity is going to be there, so you've kind of got to rank him up there, and you know, he's got a great team around him um so it that's pretty much all you can go on with boone so that that's that's what we got there 
Um, so, yeah, I'm uh, still trying to figure out what I want to do with Boone and whether or not I want to use him against you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll get into that later, asshole. <laughs> Moving on, Carolina decided that they are going to start Will Grier over Kyle Allen this I week. I think it's Will Grier, um, by the way. I'm not really sure why. That? I think it's Will Greer, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I think it is Greer. I remember David Allen, David Allen Greer. So yeah, Pam Greer, Pam Greer. Yeah, we'll go with Greer. Uh, Watch a lot of college, fo- college football, so I think that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. Um, so he's starting. <laughs> What's you know, this is gonna have to have some sort of effect on DJ Moore. Uh, you know, McCaffrey, Samuel. What what are we looking at? Yeah, I mean, look, you're not <sighs> McCaffrey. It doesn't matter. Like, even if he loses ten percent of what he does, he still could potentially be the running back one, right? <laughs> Who cares? Um, yeah. DJ Moore is another is is one of those guys that um, like I, I <laughs> I'm still using him. Regardless, he's that good of a player. Now, have I knocked him down a peg? Sure. Um, but I still trust him to just get peppered with targets as much as possible. Um, you know, Indy, one thing I noted with Indy is that they've allowed the eighth most points to wide receivers. So, you know, Greer can be bad, right? But. I mean, how good was Kyle Allen there toward the end? And Moore was still getting it done. Um, so I'm trusting Moore to just figure it out with Greer and Greer just to be just good enough as a crappy backup <laughs> to figure it out and hopefully better. Um, you know, he was yeah. he was kind of an afterthought in the draft this past year coming out of West Virginia. But, dude, he, he was a stud at West Virginia, dude. Like, that yeah. team was top-notch uh, with him. Um, he threw for a ton of yards. He's got the arm. It just, you know, it's just can he get the speed of the game down, right? And that's kind of where it comes. Like the speed of the game, just being able to read defenses and things like that. You know, hopefully he just doesn't fall off a cliff and he just throws four picks in the first half, you know, or something like that, and just nothing. You know, that's what you can't have from him. If you get an average game from Greer, you're gonna get a good game from from more. Yeah. I- Sorry. And you hit it right on the head there with the uh, with the West Virginia, you know, tie for for Greer. I mean, part of that could have been a, a product of of that offensive scheme, but still, the guy the guy was good. You know, he he's got a good arm, so I, I think it's just a a matter of Carolina <laughs> having to see see what they have. You know, that they're potentially moving on from Cam next year. You know they've seen what what Allen can do, and now they got uh, two weeks left to to see what uh, Greer can do. Yeah, and, and and real quick, just to finish it up here with the with the guys here that any that anybody cares about, Curtis Samuel. I want really nothing to do with honestly. Like he hasn't really done much the last few weeks anyway. Uh, you know the the sheet here is showing the last five weeks, you know, he's got 30 targets, which ain't too bad, but you know, 16 receptions, only 150 yards and two touchdowns. And I believe the two touchdowns came in the same, same came in the same game. Um, I, I don't have that stat in front of me totally, but for some reason that's in my head. Um, but it's just, he's nobody I, I really want to rely on at, at best, man. He's like a flex guy. Um, Oh no, they, they didn't come in the same game. One was last week, and one was two weeks ago. It was Washington and Seattle, but I mean, still he hasn't. He's thirty-one yards, twenty-five yards, then sixty-five yards, then nine, then twenty-five, then thirty-five. Like if he doesn't find the end zone, man, he's a total dud. Um, yeah, and touchdowns are something you, it's hard to rely on. So I really don't want to use him uh, in in this situation if I don't have to. No, I, I I'm. Definitely off of Samuel and have been for a long time. He just isn't producing anything worthwhile. So you can't use him in the championship game. No. All right. So let's dip back into some fun here. 
Let me get back into Fantasy Six Pack League <clears throat> Final. Yeah, As man. mentioned, it's another podcast host final this time. Uh, or this time, it's us for the football league. Uh, yeah, well, so what I mean by that is uh, in the past, for the last like five years, it feels like it's been Richard and Kevin or Richard and Jonathan in the yeah. pod, in the final of, of the Fantasy Six Pack League. Um, and they've just been dominating it. So this time it's our turn. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Like neither exactly. one of them finally make it. And then it's the other podcast that gets in. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting, it, it did. Your team is really turning around. You were the six seed. This is the league you were talking about. You were the six seed, man. You've come around, oh, you know, yeah. you've made a, you've made a lot of savvy moves here at the end. You know, you rode your Fitzpatrick pick, man. You're, you're riding it. Um, uh, DJ, you know, DJ Shark, you know, luckily is gonna help is gonna come back healthy this week for you, so that's gonna be big. Anthony Miller's been big for you. Um uh, Yeah, I oh Kittle's a monster, obviously. But uh, you know, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm talking like you know, obviously the, the Patriots defense, I'm hoping they don't have a blow up week like they, they have been having, but hopefully they pull like a Houston week or something, but I doubt it against Buffalo. That that offense doesn't do that usually. Um yeah, I just I have to hope your running backs kind of just fall off the map because that's my only hope here, dude. Because Lindsey Ingram, Connor, and then you mentioned you've got Boone, which uh, little funny, Stinks a little, 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 fun, little funny story about that. Um, yeah, I don't know what in the f happened. Literally, have no effing clue what happened. Um, went to bed like eleven o'clock Tuesday night, like triple checked my waivers because I was like I realized earlier in the day I put in all these 50 I had 56 dollars off the fab left I put in 56 dollars on Boone 56 dollars on Perryman was like okay if I don't get Boone I'll get Perryman if I don't get Perryman I'll get somebody else blah, 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 right and then I was like wait a minute how much fab money does AJ have left he's the only one that's going to go after anybody oh he's only got 20 dollars left <laughs> I'm switching all of these to 21 dollars and I'm going to get both Unless some other schmuck in the league wants to steal yeah, him, which our league doesn't, which luckily our league doesn't do that. Like they're cool and they don't do that. Um, I don't know what the hell happened. I checked ne- the next morning. I wake up at like seven thirty. I roll over, check my phone, and I see you've picked up Boone off the waivers for free. And I was like, that doesn't even make any sense. How the hell did that happen? And I checked my waivers, and I got Perryman for fifty six still. And I was like, wait, what? I go into my transaction history and it shows Perryman for the New Orleans Saints drop fifty six dollars. Perryman, uh, my my next optional pickup would have been Perryman for the New Orleans Saints twenty one dollars. Um, decline, decline, w- uh, decline, obviously because available. I already have Perryman. But like, why yeah. would I put? And then and then it was Perryman for Zach Pascal twenty one dollars. <laughs> well, no duh. Like those would have been my two optional pickups had. Boone been picked up first because like ugh, I have no idea what happened. I I I am I I hit up the the chat in on on sleeper it was like you guys have to have like transaction logs of like people entering their waivers. Like please tell me something just wasn't synced between the computer and the phone cuz this literally makes no sense. Cuz I put in the $56 claims on my computer which I've never done this year. But I just happened to be on the computer during the day, and I just did it. Um, but then later at night, I was doing it on my phone. And I don't know if I just like left the computer open, and it didn't sync or save or something, but something didn't sync and save. And then you get Boone. So now I'm sitting here right now currently with Dalvin Cook in my lineup, which I'm obviously going to have to flip out. And the question for me is, do I pray that he plays and leave him in there and put in Jamal Williams, who I can play Monday night, or do I just slide in DeAndre Washington, who I thankfully had and kept? Yeah. So I had my bowling league party Tuesday night, and I knew that there's no way I was going to get around to waivers unless I did them early. Of course, I worked late, was running around to get to bowling on time, and then <laughs> I just didn't get waivers in. So randomly, I woke mattered. up at 3.30. <laughs> And I was like, uh, so I went in all my leagues and I'm checking. I'm like, who grabbed Boone? Who grabbed Boone? I 
I have Cook in my league, my home league, and I meant to put one in for him there too. And one of the guys playing in the third place game picked him up, oh. which is fine because now my opponent doesn't have him. Right. But I had the highest waiver out of the four guys. Ah, uh, sucks, dude. I let I I told the guys in the third place game that they could make pickups because there is still money yeah. involved. Yeah. See, I thought. See, and, I thought Richard and or. Uh, Adam, we're going to do it. And they both have more money than us. So I thought one of them might have gotten Boone, but they didn't go after anybody, which I kind of respect at that point. Like, you're going for refund of money at that point. So, like, I kind of respect not yeah. doing it. I wouldn't do it either. But I've seen it happen. I yeah, don't know. And I'm so just bitter as hell in our league. Because like, I literally have Cook in the other leagues I'm in the finals in, except for my Dynasty League. Um, yeah. And Boone was my number one pickup in every league. And I'm... I. I, I don't you don't have to believe me, man, worked. but like, I don't know how the hell it happened. I have no idea what happened, but I swear to you on everything I can swear upon. That's how, that's what I left it as. You can believe yeah. it or not, but it sucks ass, dude. And if I lose because I, you fucking have Boone over, <laughs> I have to play fucking DeAndre Washington and he does nothing, I'm going to be so fucking bitter. You have no idea. <laughs> I had, I, I like I said, I woke up randomly. It was like, uh, I didn't put waivers in. So I'm scrambling and I looked in our league. And I was like, wait, why is he sitting here? Add immediately. No money. Okay. He's a free agent all of a sudden. I, I, I don't understand that. I mean, what? I woke up at like 730, so, checked it, and then yeah, and you're I sending am, me message. What the fuck happened? What? I, I, I am the entire league. I am the entire league immediately <laughs> at like 735 and was like, no, wait, what? <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't timestamp the uh it doesn't timestamp the 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 chat messages, but like immediately I was just like, "Wait, what happened?" Before I went to bed, I checked. <laughs> and like yeah. the, it, I I don't know. I uh, It literally makes no sense. Like why the it. hell would I even put that Why would I have a $56 claim in for Perryman and then a $21 bid for the exact same ad drop? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, I've been doing this for how many years? Like, I'm not that dense. Like, I, <sighs> I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I would have to say that there was some kind of sync issue. And, and I feel like I've had that happen to me earlier in the year where I've made an ad on the computer and then tried to switch it on the phone or well, vice versa. and And it just didn't. Like something just doesn't doesn't go together. I'll tell and you the, like the ad drop on the com- options. Yeah, on, on the, the phone. phone. Yeah, I'll tell you. Yeah, the computer app, if that's what they kind of call it. it yeah, it isn't as robust as the phone, and I kind of wish they would fix that because there are times where I just literally want to be able to see it better and like see. Yeah. yeah, I. You can't even get into some of the options that you can get into on the on the on the computer that you can the phone. Like, look, I love Sleeper. I I like it better than ESPN. Still, I like it better than Yahoo. Still, I like it better uh, than MFL and all those guys. Like, uh, it's just a slicker, um, especially the app and stuff. Like, it's so much better. But it's, this is yeah. one where like I kind of want to go. Like, I don't know even know how you would test this without screwing over yourself, right? Like trying to like put in waiver claims once on the computer, once on the phone and like, see what happens. Um, I almost like, have to do like a like test, like a test. Li- yeah. That's what I was thinking. Just but I, create I don't know what happened, man, but anyway, we're running on about this, but uh, get back to the matchup here. So I did get Perryman. So I'm look, I'm going all in. I've got Winston and Perryman on my lineup and I'm riding it, dude. Um, you're going to smash yeah, me in the tight end. to, dude. If Perryman yeah. gets another three touchdowns. He's not going to. His, let's be real. He needs, um, he needs to go back to his, his Raven days. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing, wearing yeah. my, uh, my Bolden jersey here. Yeah. Uh, I, I miss I miss Anquan. And obviously it's noted <sighs> many times that I am an Eagles fan over the Ravens all day, every day. But I need the Eagles to play like the Ravens this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Pete Dallas. So yeah, man. So I don't know. I'm it's it's a tough matchup this. for me, man. Because like Edelman's going against Buffalo, and Edelman like he played like sixty two percent of the snaps this past week, like which was crazy. Was like oh my god, garbage like last week. I don't know what happened. And then you know Zeke's going against Philly, and they they got a stout run defense, but hopefully he can just get catch enough passes and just smash them that way. 
Um, yeah, I got, I got more, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm riding the Greer. Time, I gotta, so. I gotta ride more in Greer because my other receivers are kind of poo. Like it's Sterling Shepard and company. Like, eh. um, Galladay is a tough matchup. Denver, he's clearly gonna get uh, Harris on him, uh, and he's been kind of bad. I, I just hope he finds the end zone. It, I really think you've got the advantage here, regardless if I had Boone or not. Like it's just a bad matchup for me. Like. My team's kind of falling apart. I'm surprised I made it as far as I did. Um, yeah, I mean, I I have to uh, pat myself on the back a little bit here. After starting in the league 0 and 4, did and you really? Off, I started 0 and 4 because I lost Roethlisberger in week basically week one because he sucked in week That's one. Right. And, and I, I just kept getting. Hurt. I lost Hill. I lost Deshaun. I just got sacked. And you lost Connor for a long time. Early. I Connor's been out. Yeah, I had Chubb and I traded I think with Kevin. <laughs> yes, you did. Um I, I got yeah, I trade. traded uh Oh, if you had Chubb at this point, man, game over. Chubb and somebody else and, it didn't and matter. a receiver and then he gave me Beasley and Connor. Or maybe I gave him Beasley and and got somebody else back. I don't remember, but I ended up with Beasley later too. So yeah, I, if I had Chubb, definitely it would have would have helped me out because that, that week I traded him, he freaking blew up against the Ravens. So, and I was playing Kevin, that didn't help. <laughs> but I, I told you early on, I said I'm gonna make the playoffs. I don't care. And everybody laughed at me in the draft for drafting the Jets and the Patriots. And I said in the draft, I'm going to win the championship while drafting two defenses. Well, guess what? I have a fucking chance to back those words up, <laughs> and I hope that I do. So, the prophecy of oh, me man. passing on injuries to players will hopefully change and pass a championship on to myself. Yeah. So you don't want to be Moving cool, on. and you don't want to be cool and give me Boone back. Just let, no. him, just let him drop him and come back to me. I don't. Knowing... I don't have any proof. I don't have any visual proof that you put in these claims for him. I, I, I understand your man of your word, and and we've been friends for a long, long time. But right, I also know how how much you love winning championships, especially when it's against me. So I'm not giving you any kind of upper leg to do that at all. <laughs> I'm so bitter because that would have been fucking perfect. I had Kelk played. I could have slid him in there, kept him in there, just, and if he didn't play, I could have put Boone in. Maybe, maybe I should just drop Boone on Sunday so he's he's not even available Monday. <laughs> just to spite you. <laughs> oh, man. That yeah, because you're not going to use him. You're not going to use him. You're not going to wait and hope Boone plays. Even if, you, even if Boone plays, I don't honestly think I'd play him over any of your guys. It's cl- it's close. Lindsay, like none of your guys are Lindsay studs, sucks. but like Detroit Ingram, blows. Ingram and Connor are both one PM games, so it's it's hard to kind of play them over one of those guys. Yeah, I, mean, I, I just don't think you can. No. I, I I wouldn't, and I, that's just honestly like I wouldn't do it. Well, um, I, yeah, literally, Boone's only va- Boone's literally only player. valuable for me, really, because like I had Cook and like I could just make the swap, especially since it's a Monday night game. Yeah, so that's the worst part about it is like if Cook's questionable Sunday, I have to make the decision: do I wait and play Jamal Williams, which I really don't want to do, or yeah. do I just slide in DeAndre Washington and get hopefully running back two numbers. I mean, it's possible. He he put up good numbers a couple weeks ago. When he's been yeah. given opportunities, he's yeah. done something with it. You know, he's kind of like, uh, kind of like Mostert, but Mostert's just been an animal. And Sam yeah. Fran's like, we can't give it to anybody else because he's been too <laughs> pretty good. Much, pretty much. And Breda's fallen off hard. Coleman, I, I mean, I feel like that was predicted early on that he was just going to kind of be Coleman. So. I anyway, know. we shall see well, and report back on the next show. Yeah, which I don't so know what it'll be because next week's Christmas, so we'll figure it out. Yeah, so let's dig into to the injuries here. You want to start them off or you want me to just keep No, rolling? just go for it, man. All right. Quarterback injuries. Uh, Mr. Dak Prescott 
is dealing with a shoulder injury, but he is practicing. Um, he well, won't sit this week. So I wrote this, this so matchup. Actually, I wrote that initially, and then I read something right before the podcast, and I meant to update it, so my bad on that one, that he actually may not throw until Sunday. <laughs> like literally he's supposed to play, but he practice, may not. Yeah. Yeah. He, like he's practicing whatever that means, but now apparently he may not even throw, uh, who knows, but he's going to play. I mean, that matchup's too important for them. Um, yeah, he's just going to go out and practice and do his little, <laughs> yeah, his little whatever the hell is his little like, hip, his little hip I'm thrusts. A, I'm a bartender shaking drinks, football in the hands stupidity thing is that everybody yeah. mimics now i mean it's it's a uh, good matchup for him you know the philly secondary is kind of a joke i mean look what eli tried to do them in the first half he came back um yeah but like you know i i do kind of worry that he's just not there man he's just not healthy he's not going to be accurate you're you're dealing with shoulder and finger injury at the same time like i do not i do knock him down a couple slots in my rankings um he's still in the top 10 but he's a little lower yeah. in my rankings as opposed to the ecr right now and the thing about that too is, you know, this is the game that you know oh, this is the everybody's matters, been talking about for for four weeks now because the NFC East is such a dumpster fire. Yep. That this is going to decide it. Um, you know, had Dallas not blown the f up last week against the Rams, who had came into that game really hot, um, then then it wouldn't have been as big i mean i still feel like it dallas would have needed to win to like cement it but yeah this is going to be this is going to be a big game so speaking of nfc nfc east and dumpster fires daniel jones is now likely to play um the last i had heard that eli might still get a shot but looks like uh looks like Danny Dimes could be back in there. So again, you're you're not starting him or Eli in a championship game if you're in some league that doesn't matter and you don't care. Okay, sure, why not? Running backs. We've got Mr. Bo Scarborough was inactive last week due to the shoulder injury. Uh Wes Hillis I have no idea who that is. Um, maybe Came Peyton up from Hill the practice younger squad. Brother. <laughs> What's that? Literally got called up from the practice squad. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> the second coming of Peyton Hillis scored twice last week. Um, th- this isn't a backfield that you no. want to even dream of relying on. Although I did see Carryon Johnson in the fa- uh, Fantasy Pros rankings. I did not see... If he is playing this week, but it's not guaranteed. But yeah, some people are kind of speculating, like they're ranking him as he as if he is playing. I've got him in a half PPR. Oh, I've got him. Man, I've got him pretty low. I guess fifty eighth. So I'm not counting on him right now. It's pretty much what it comes down to. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It's, uh... Even if he does, like I think they're not gonna like they're not gonna go full out with him. There's no reason to. It's, why? Yeah. Why would you? I mean, he's already been out two years straight with knee issues. Yeah. So yeah, there's just no reason let's, to, man. Let's let's, <clears throat> you know, and unless it's again another like, let's see what we got with this guy, you know, and yeah, probably try to draft another running back. So yeah, it's possible. But still, no, I I don't think they're gonna use him if he plays at all. You know, maybe just get him a few reps, get his legs under him. You know, go into the off season kind of you know with. Some momentum, I guess, if you want to call it that. But I'm not. I'm yeah. not banking on a lot here with him. Yeah. Next, we got Carlos. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. Uh, limited <laughs> in practice with an ankle injury of his own. Should play. You know, but I. I mean, it's it's the Bucks. Why you don't? No, you don't want to play hide no. this week. No, I've got him ranked 32, <laughs> dude. I don't want anything to do with him. He's yeah. he's been good. Let's be honest here. He's been good, but he's not been like yeah, he's been I mean, flex worthy for sure. Yeah, it's not like <clears throat> it's not like he's gonna win the games. Man, he's had too many single digit fantasy point games, even against you know, um, <coughs> even in some good matchups here and there. I'm not relying on it against that Tampa Bay run defense. Yeah. <clears throat> 
Dame Williams returned to practice. Uh, he was close last week, but ultimately didn't play. Um, so they're just trying to make sure that he's healthy, get him ready to roll for the playoffs. Um, Jordan Howard, not likely to play. Um, I mean, with all, without any of these receivers, Sanders is a, a must start this week. I mean, he had a huge game last week. And he was the only... Um, how, what was it? No, I'm not not him. Sorry, I'll I'll get into that <laughs> stat later. I, I remember what it is. Um, Boston Scott is, is also in flex consideration in mm-hmm. PPR, especially half PPR. Maybe it depends on who else you have depth wise, but keep an eye on that. Um, Mixon popped up on the injury port. Keep an eye on him as well. Uh, wide receivers we've got christian kirk dealing with an ankle injury he did return to practice today though so monitor his status if you plan on rolling with him this week ty hilton he got out of last week's math matchup without re-injuring himself so that that was a plus <clears throat> probably the only win for uh the colts last week <laughs> that and was a bad uh, game <laughs> yeah uh, that was just a a, a murderous game. So <laughs> um, it, it's still hard to trust him though, with these limited snaps and, and him not being a hundred percent. He was, and, I think he was under 50% snaps or maybe just over 50% snaps. I, I had the page yeah. up, but I close a lot of the stuff so that I can do all the podcast recording here. But um, yeah, it's yeah. I've got him ranked in the high thirties, but like, honestly, I, I might, tinker with that a little bit more and drop him a bit like ah, there's just a bunch of guys like right below and that i think i would trust just slightly more um yeah so you know i might drop him to the low 30 range which pretty much means he's off the board in most in most championship rounds because people in those rounds have players more than two or three of these like top 30 receivers it seems like so yeah yeah, and with the Colts now officially being out of the playoffs, I mean, they have no reason to keep him out there other than to just get him reps, which, I mean, he's T.Y. Hilton. I don't feel like he really needs reps. He just didn't look healthy either. That's the problem. Like, yeah. He just didn't. He wasn't going full speed. You could tell he just wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Uh, DJ Chark, who you mentioned earlier, is cleared to run and cut, or was cleared to run and cut uh, back on Monday, but we haven't seen any updates since, so monitor his status if you're looking to roll with him. Edelman is dealing with uh, knee and shoulder injuries. <clears throat> I mean, he he's likely to suit up. It's Edelman, but I mean, as you already kind of alluded to, his his snap count <clears throat> super down last week. Yeah, I am worried, but again, it's just, he's one of those guys that, especially in PPR, I know we're even we're just half PPR, but like even in those leagues, yeah. he gets so many targets when he's on the field. <laughs> you can't. He's yeah. like the only good receiver they have. So Brady's is like here, Edelman here, Edelman here, Edelman, and he plays. He moves all around the field. So I, I yeah, he's he's for some everywhere. reason don't I mean, think that White is going to be able to shadow him, but you know, it's not like the rest of that secondary is garbage, but like, I don't think that's, I don't think they're going to do that with him. Um, It's it's a risky play. Like he literally, he literally, he literally could bust on you. Um, But look, I'm not, I'm not sitting Edelman in my championship round. I'm just not doing it. No, you you have to play him. I mean, this is, this is, D championship week, you you really have to play your studs. Unless I, you just have some random like like a Perryman or somebody that's coming in for this injury. But I wouldn't play Perryman really over well. him either. What's that? I wouldn't put Perryman in over him either. No, 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 no. I, that's what I'm saying. Like I, just saying if you have Perryman instead of like another stud who's just been falling off lately. Um, you know, and and it's a volume thing, and it's a matchup thing. Yeah, like you I've ha- got Perryman. You still have like, to play matchups. Like, look, I mean, I've got Perryman studs. over guys like Cup, Landry, yeah. Boyd, Mike Williams, Gallup. Uh, I've got him over OBJ. 
I got him over a lot of guys this week. I mean, it's just he's yeah. got phenomenal matchup. He performed last week when he had to. Um, he got he, honestly, Tampa Bay really. He's the number one guy now. So, like, yeah, I get you on that. But Edelman's too high up there for Perryman and guys like that to to jump him. Like, it's only the studs that yeah. are over top of Edelman or guys like Parker, who we didn't consider a stud. Uh, you know, ten weeks ago, but he's performed for like eight straight weeks. So that's a yeah. different story. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so just uh, see what happens with Edelman. I, I mean, I, I would find it very hard to believe that they wouldn't play him. But and the good news is they play uh, Saturday, so you're going to find out early. Yeah. So that'll be that'll definitely be a bonus if for some reason he is a, a late scratch. You can scramble. Wouldn't that and just be a kick in the nuts in. for me? Yeah, yeah, which I'm okay with. Of course you are. <laughs> uh, it will be quite the boon if Edelman is out. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You see this right here. You see this right here. That's for you. <laughs> That's for you. That's for you. You know what? <laughs> yeah. You, no. No, no mind. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. All right, keep going. Keep going with that trash talk, buddy. Juju Smith-Schuster, who we thought would return last week, was limited in practice again. Uh, did not play last week. And yeah, I, I mean, whatever. He's he's very questionable. So. It depends on. I mean, Pittsburgh still has a chance to get the playoffs too. Um, yeah, they're but in the driver's need, seat. Yeah, they they need need some help, um, and they they have to actually root for the Ravens. I feel like um, they play them in the last week, so uh, you, you you want them to you know win this week, so maybe they bench some people, but. I don't see them doing that anyways. All right. So lastly, we got some tight end injuries to update here. Uh, David Njoku was a healthy scratch last week in a great matchup. So even if he's healthy, go ahead and move on. Um, Gerald Everett has been cleared to play. Uh, Tough matchup for Higby and Everett, but... You know, I think with the return of Everett, Higby gets bounced down a little bit, but he's been so good, so it's kind of hard to to ignore him. I mean, what are you doing with Higby this you week? You know, honestly, I, I haven't adjusted my rankings since the Everett news. I saw it real late today. Um, in fact, I still don't have Everett in my rankings because it was such late news. Um mm-hmm. I, I don't know, man. Like, it's such a weird situation because obviously Everett was good, but not as good as Higby had been, right? Um, no. I mean, Higby's been like off the charts good, like George Kittle good. Like, it's crazy. Um, yeah. You know. Now, with that in mind, though, Everett was the guy early on. And when he was healthy, and and uh, golf sucked. He was terrible early this year. He's been so much better lately. So is that part of you know? Is that a, a reason because of Higby stepping up? I think it could or, be, man, but it also could be that you know Cooks is back, and not that Cooks has been good, but he does take pressure off. Uh, you know, of he does. Yeah, Robert just, Woods has showed up. Robert big Woods lately. has yeah really come along, but yeah, man, I don't know. Yeah, it's I mean, just I still think at this point Higby has to be trusted as a tight end one. Uh, he's going to be moved to the probably the back end of my tight end one range, probably like the nine ten range. Um, yeah. He does get a tough matchup with San Fran, so that's not helping his cause at all. Um, no. You know, I, but that's yeah. a big game. That's a really big it game. It is it's a huge seeding. game for both. Um you know <sighs> Everett, I, I I don't think you can trust him, you know, unless you're just like 
unless somehow you got to the championship game with like Kyle Rudolph, maybe fine, I guess, put in Everett and see what happens. Maybe you get luck out, but um, it's just like whatever at that point. I don't yeah. know, man. It's it's a weird one in that situation. I still think I'm just rolling out Higby and, and hoping it works. But, you know, it's weird. I had a lot of questions last week with, you know, do you start Mark Andrews or, or Higby? And I have both in the same league and another one. And at the last minute, I went, you know what? Screw it. I'm going Higby and told everybody to go Higby. And then Mark Andrews scores Thursday night. And everybody's like, what the hell, Joe? And I was like, I yeah, pissed. my bad. Like, I'm going to feel that too. And then Higby blows up for like 11 catches and 120 something yards. And, and I was like, well, there you go. <laughs> so everybody was like, thank you. Um, it's yeah, weird. It I, works that I way. I did the same thing. I, I benched, uh, I benched, um, what is it? I benched at, uh, Andrews, sorry. And I played Goddard instead and i mean goddard still got me 10 and a half in that league but i had 15.2 from andrews sitting on my bench until the sunday games and then when i'm sitting there down nearly 40 points come monday morning i was like great i could have used those that that would have been nice but i still won so i'm good with it yeah um all right last last guy we've got we got uh, Ingram has officially finally been ruled out for the season. Way to go, Giants. <laughs> long enough. Oh, yeah. Apparently, he might have a Liz Frank injury now. Surprise. Jesus. Uh, what, has he been hanging out with Alshon? Who knows, Come on. man. All right. Let's get to these picks, man. Let's finish this up. Yep. Highest, lowest scoring game. I'm going to take Texans versus Bucks, and I'm just praying that this happens because I need the Bucks to do big because I'm Use the two of them against you. Uh, but I do legit think it's going to be a high-scoring game. Obviously, we know the Bucks' yeah. defense is god-awful. Um, so Watson and company is just going to score a lot of points. The Bucks are going to have to pass a ton to keep up. Um, and there goes your Winston. Hopefully, he doesn't turn into Winston from five weeks ago where he throws four four picks and no – you know, um, no, no touchdowns for me, but – uh, I'm I'm gonna guess that that's not gonna happen. What you got? Um, I am going with Philly and Dallas. I mean, I I have to pick this. It's why it's the <laughs> biggest game for the crappiest division in football. <laughs> and so, why is it your highest scoring game? Usually, these games are like low scoring competitive matchups. Dallas. Beat our asses thirty-seven to ten the first time we played. Okay, they so had a great guessing, game. So you're just guessing so Dallas is going to run up on you. I mean, I think that the total score is going to be around fifty-one, which is way higher than what the uh, the line is. I think it was at 40, 46 maybe when I looked earlier. I don't remember. Um. But, yeah, I mean, Philly needs to show up. They need to play. They need to win this game. They're at home. It's going to be a rowdy-ass crowd. It's a 425 game. And everybody I know that has season tickets, including the people that I've gone to games with, we get there at 7, 8 in the morning for the 425 games. And everybody is hammered. So it's just going to be ugly in the stands. And, and I think on the field, it's going to be, it's going to be a big, big game. So what do you got for lowest? Uh, so mine's going to be bills versus Pats. And I, uh, regret saying this, but yeah, I'm, I'm afraid there's not going to be a lot of scoring here on either side. I mean, the defenses are both so good. Um, you know, the, the Pats really stuck it to the bills earlier in the year. Defense really stepped up, and and you know that was during that streak where they're just scoring twenty points a game. So, I think the Bills are a little bit better of a team since then. So I don't think the Pats are going to dominate them quite like that. But you know their defense is still really good. The Pats' offense is kind of taking a step back this you know as the season's gone on with Edelman especially being hurt. Um, I just think it's going to be a, a you know like a seventeen thirteen type game or something like that. You know that's all that's all you're going to get. Yeah, 
Patriots only gave up 10 points to Buffalo the first time they met back in week four. Yeah. They had five sacks, two forced fumbles, four interceptions. Um, yeah, they just they they manhandled them. But that was basically when they were in their glory with playing crap teams to start the season. And Buffalo's turned into a good team. So yeah. I'm not, not yeah, trying really to say have. that they're, they're a crap team. That was a game that they could have won. Um, and that would have changed a lot of things. But yep. I'm going with Denver. Uh, versus Detroit. I like it. I, I mean, it, uh, and I was leaning towards Bills Pats, but I, I just think Denver's defense has been really good all year. Detroit's offense, you know, Blau has been okay ish, but very yeah. turnover prone. So that's, that's, I think it's going to be a defensive struggle. I hear you, man. All right, quarterback sleepers. Um, let's see here. Mine is Drew Locke. Uh, not, look, not. I get you, man. Not a lot to like here in this game overall. But uh, you know, I kind of just mainly agreed with a lot of the a lot of the picks. You know, on the ECR as far as quarterbacks went, so. I just looked for a guy who had kind of some upside with a with a a solid um, matchup, and I mean Detroit secondary is just, Detroit's team in general is just kind of a joke right now. So, um, you know, Lock Lock has been good three you know two out of the three games he's played, one against the Chargers, one against Houston, right, uh, and then struggled against Kansas City, who obviously has a, a really good secondary. Um, and that snow game was just, I don't know if that got to him or if it was yeah, more against that. defense, but I'm thinking he's going to bounce back. He's athletic. You know, he'll just make it work and Detroit's easy to, to, you know, get around. So I'm, I'm liking that matchup there a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm on that. Uh, I, I liked him as well, but saw you grabbed him. So I went ahead and took your boy Haskins from Washington. I, look, he had a he had a damn good game against the Eagles last week, and had me questioning if this week's game was even going to matter. Um, <laughs> until yeah. Wentz, Wentz had that bullet throw through two guys on Washington, who I thought both intercepted it uh, into Sanders in the back corner of the end zone. But Haskins played well. Um, you know, the receiver stepped up. He had a long bomb to McLaurin early. Well, it was a catch and run um, to McLaurin, but yeah. What's that? It was a catch and run to McLaurin, but yeah. Well, it, was like, yeah it was like a 15-yard oh, yeah, yeah, pass, sorry. and McLaurin just like burned yards. everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Big big play. Um, but yeah, he looked good. So I'm, I'm going with him as my sleeper. I like it. I like it. it yeah. Shockingly enough, though, like Daniel Jones, if he plays, could be the pick. You know, that's the interesting yeah. one where, uh, you know, Tampa and Washington, he kind of made it look stupid the first couple of weeks he played. So that's an interesting one, too. But you're probably not starting those guys. Those are more DFS plays than anything. You know, week 16, you know, you're, you're not starting Drew Lock and <laughs> Dwayne Haskins. But uh, my running back moving on here is going to be Boston Scott. Um, Again, not not loving a lot of the guys out of the top thirty here, but you know, especially in PPR, Boston Scott, he's gonna get work. They they have nobody else to throw to. They have he got seven targets last week, six targets the week before, and he played like what a quarter and a half. So, um, he's obviously gonna get work because they have to use him. They have basically one receiver, in uh, what's his name, something Ward or Hill. Correct. Greg Ward. Greg Ward. Thank you. Yeah, I don't even know his name. Um, so yeah, I'm going Boston Scott. Just opportunity, I guess. Yeah. No, I like it. Um, I myself am going with Tarek Cohen. I think this is a second or third time I've actually taken him. Yeah, you love your Tarek Cohen, man. Uh, I do, man. I, I love this <laughs> you guy. Really do. He's, he's really stepped up though. The last, uh, you know. Four of the last, no, five of the last six weeks, he's just really shown up. He's not not getting a ton of carries, but he has been getting some yards there, um, in in four of those six games. 
but obviously where you want him is for PPR. Um, I mean, he's got a ton of targets and continues to get targets um, in, in five out of those six games. He has six plus targets. So, I mean, that's what you're looking at. I'm sorry, four, four out of those six games, six or six or more targets, no less than four targets. Um, and he's, he's not getting a ton of yards, but it's still, it's enough yards to, to make a difference. Um, he does only have two touchdowns since week 10 and they were in weeks 10 and 11. So he could potentially change that this week though. Kansas city is weak against running backs, um, strong against receivers. So I, I like his upside. Yeah, man. Um, I had, a, I had a tough time picking a receiver here. Um, my, I'm gonna, I'm going with Kenny Stills, man. I'm going with that high scoring game that I like. Again, Tampa's defense is just bad. Um, you know, Tampa's secondary is bad, so they're just Watson and company is gonna just make it rain. I feel like, you know, the the teams just obviously they bracket Hopkins, but he still gets his. Fuller really doesn't do a whole lot unless he just catches like two bombs. Stills is kind of a guy who just sneaks out the back and like catches a couple touchdowns here and there, right? You know, so I'm, I'm just banking on him getting a touchdown, just being useful this week, man. Yeah, yeah, I like Stills this week too. I picked him up as a flyer in a couple of my leagues just because of last week and because of the matchup. Um, I am going with your boy, Greg Ward, who you're just talking about. Look, this guy's come a long way. Um, used to be a, a college quarterback for Houston. Had some big, big games with them. Came into the league and was on the Philly practice squad as a receiver for a long time. Obviously, injuries have completely decimated the Philly wide receiver core all season. And guys like Ward are finally getting a chance. Uh JJ uh, Arthiga Whiteside, as everybody seems to pronounce it, and maybe that's correct. I don't know. Um, it looks like Arcega to me. He uh, he's done nothing. I mean, he's a rookie, but he's really not been there. And mm -mm. Greg Ward is actually the only wide receiver to have caught a pass yeah. last week for Philly. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. He had that a hell was, of a game. That was the stat game winner. That I was thinking Didn't of he? earlier. And circled back to, so you're welcome. Yeah. My stories always have some kind of a conclusion. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> uh, it might just always. take you 15 minutes to get there, but we got you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I like Ward this week. All right, man, moving on to bus here. Um, I'm going to start with my bus, and it's Kyler Murray. And uh, like, I, I love what this guy's done all year long. Um, I think he's got a, a, a pretty bright future in the NFL, but I, it's something something's off with him. Um, uh, and I know he was dealing with a hamstring. He just he's he's had some rough matchups, but at the same time, man, it's just you know Seattle's not like a cakewalk, but they're they're not like dominant or anything either. But I don't know, just something feels off with him. You know, Kirk kind of bang up too, like you know we mentioned. So maybe that's doing it. Um, they're relying on Kenyon Drake, who obviously was awesome last week. Uh, but I don't know. Just again, something just in my gut tells me you really don't want to rely on Kyler Murray this week, and hopefully you've got a better option. Yeah, and hopefully that option is not Ryan Tannehill. Look, I get it. Tannehill's been awesome. But I, I just don't like this matchup. I mean, New Orleans crushed the Colts last week. and Or I guess technically this week because it was Monday. But, I mean, I just think I, Tannehill can have an okay game. But again, I don't think you're really looking to rely on him in the fantasy championship. Um, I well, so let me if ask you. Are, you so let me ask you. you are, in a league, I've got Tannehill and Wentz. Who are you starting? I'm taking Wentz. 
It's it's. I don't know. I, I get, get it. it. It's tough to do, but you know he he had a horrendous game against Dallas the first matchup. And that's why he had all his guys too, man. That's my point. He's got nobody, and he's been playing out of his mind. Um, <sighs> it, he still has a shit ton of terrible, inaccurate throws. But like I said, he comes back and totally redeems himself <laughs> with a bullet to the back corner of the end zone that you think got picked off twice. I mean, come on. The last three games, he's played better, right? Let's look at it. Miami, the Giants, and the Redskins. Really? And he, Really? He we're, we're... Lost, they lost to Miami. They Doesn't... almost potentially lost to the Giants. But it and they very well could have lost to I, Washington. I get it. I get it that they've, you know, that the team is it, it. My point is is that Miami, the Giants and the Redskins are crappy teams. Right? So like I don't know. I still, I still think I'm going to Tannehill. I don't think I can sit him, dude. The dude's just been on fire. I mean, he's had some decent matchups too, but like he still has done better in the harder matchups than Wentz has done, and he's done better in the easier matchups than Wentz has done in the easy matchups. I just, I just like Tannehill better, man. Tannehill's done so well because of how accurate he's been, and that, I mean, that's obviously you want to have accurate throws, and, and he's I got just AJ Brown who's Wentz just balling out, dude. Throws. You got no, AJ, AJ Brown who's AJ just Brown balling awesome. out. So yeah, I don't know. I'm still sticking with Tannehill. But yeah. I get your I hesitation. Mean, the matchup's not great, and you do worry that like Lattimore is gonna shadow Brown. Um Yeah. But I don't I mean, know. He man. has to. Yeah, I think he does. Unless too. for some reason they think Corey Davis is a threat. No, 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 no. no I, I mean, no. yeah. No, definitely not. No, but so. I mean look at look at the teams that Tannehill's played too in his last four games. Jacksonville destroyed them. They suck. Oakland destroyed them. They suck. Houston can be thrown on all day. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying the in, matchups weren't there for Tannehill either. Uh, yeah. I'm just saying so, that I, I just I think how you know, especially with Henry being, you know, not being full go every game right now. Um, the way they're they're having to rely on Tannehill a bit more. Um, so that's just yeah. why I like Tannehill more. So anyway, yeah. let's move I mean, on. Yep. Uh, my bust uh, is going to be Mr. Philip Lindsay. I mean, I, I don't really know what else to say about this guy, but he is just disappointed week in and week out. I mean, ever since he got the, ever since he got the job. Right, um, it just hasn't done it. Um, yeah, it's a nice matchup against Detroit, but so was it last is. week against Kansas City. So was two weeks ago against the Chargers. Six and three points in standard leagues. In half PPR leagues, you're looking at eight and three. He has scored double digit points once in a half PPR league in the last five weeks. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Like, I'm bad. just, I'm just not feeling it with him, man. Like, could Detroit be the one that you know he does it against? Sure. I, I, I'm just, I just don't like it at all. No, I, I'm not, I'm not loving that matchup, and it sucks because I have Lindsey and kind of need to rely on him. So yeah, I think you're kind of in that state where I think you're, you're probably throwing him out there just because of the matchup and, and just trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. Um, I'm going with Todd Gurley. I he mean, was one I was Gurley's, looking at. What's that? He was one I was looking at for sure. Yeah, I mean it. It was kind of tough to pick, but. I, I just I don't like the matchup, um, even though it it is very important matchup. But I, you know, he's been way better. Yes. Than I expected this year, and and well, especially lately took, took the chance. Well, yeah, at least lately is, you know, when it matters. You know, early in the season, you can you can, 
you know, come back from like an 0 4 start and finish as the sixth seed and, and make it to the championship game. But wow. keep patting yourself on the back, man. Good job. I will. Uh huh. I will. Okay. Two six seeds to the championship. Hey, six seeds are I have nothing to lose. Hey, man, right. I've done it. I've won. Hey, I've I've done that many a times. It, actually, what's funny is the champion of our league more often than not is like the five or six seed, which is hilarious. Yeah. It's great. I love it. It's a true underdog story, just like dodgeball. Um, well, you're yeah, able to girly. pick up. I say this every year. You're able to pick up those like guys who could just like blow up at the end of the year. They're like the late season like guys to where the teams that are one or two and three, right, or even whatever, yeah. have guys who they've been good and they've relied on all year, and they're like, well, I don't want to drop you know this guy who may be kind of slipping a little bit, but has been good for me all year to pick up. You know, you know, uh, Anthony Miller, but Anthony Miller has been a stud. <laughs> so, like, you were able and to take that. You're that. able to take that chance to where yeah. the number one and two seeds really don't don't it's, have that opportunity. It's basically injury placement players falling out at the end of the season. Exactly. I mean, Boston Scott to me is this year's. Damian Williams, uh, no, not as good no, as Dame Williams. No, was last Damian year. Williams was a run, running back one coming oh, down was, the stretch. He was phenomenal, but Scott is like easily a flex play, maybe low end running back. Yeah, too, he's he's flex play, but yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I don't I don't like Gurley, but yeah, Gurley, I li- I like that pick. Uh, so finishing off here, I've got Cooper Cup, you know. I, I don't know, man. It's just Cup's been kind of disappointing these last few weeks. Um, I think he, I mean, he did okay last week. Um, but again, San Fran. Um, I mean, it's 16, 13, 13 the last couple of weeks. But man, like you were, you were just like, you were winning weeks with Cup earlier in the year, and now he's just kind of like wide receiver two-ish range. Um, and a couple of weeks before that, he was not even that. So, I don't know. Against San Fran, I'm just not feeling it. I, I think the Rams are really going to hit a, hit a roadblock here. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, especially after, uh, you know, last week for San Fran. But I'm going Galladay. Um, I think uh, – I. I like I said earlier, I think this game is going to be very low scoring. And Galladay is really the best weapon that that Detroit has left. Um, Amendola is good; he's a PPR monster, but I just still think Denver's defense is is too good, and uh, this is going to be a down game for Galladay. Hmm. I'm uh <laughs> sadly agreeing with you. My receivers Galladay and Edelman in our league are not looking not looking super awesome. Ugh. All right, injuries have gotten That's the better. Okay. Injuries have gotten the better of me in the last <laughs> this end of the season. I'm probably lucky to make it to the finals, to be honest with you. So yeah, all right. Uh, defense, 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 defense. What do we got here? So I'm going with. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I know we're usually around the forty percent range, but I'm going to cheat and say. The Indianapolis Colts, who are at forty three percent, there's nobody below them that I really cared about. So, uh, they're playing Carolina, they're starting a rookie quarterback for the first game ever. They've already been playing like crap. Go with Indy if you can. Yeah, definitely <laughs> like Indy this week. Um, but I did not have to cheat. I went back to my well of Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Look, they've had double digit points the past two weeks. They've averaged, you know, 21 points against, uh, 20 points and then 22, uh, or vice versa. I can't remember. They have six sacks, two interceptions, four fumble recoveries, and a touchdown. Now, granted, a lot of those stats came against Carolina uh, two weeks ago, but they were still very solid last week against San Fran. They beat San Fran in a complete upset road win. So, you know, I, I love the matchup. 
I just think that they can keep things rolling here, and uh, that's my pick. Yeah, no, that's a good one, man. Uh, so that's it for the show. Um, good luck, everybody, in week 16. Like I said, I, I kind of doubt we're doing a show next Thursday, the day after Christmas, but I don't know. We'll talk about it. We'll figure it out. I may need it after a long day of Christmas and stuff, but uh, we'll figure it out. Uh, but yeah, good luck to everybody in week 16. Hope you bring home some championships. And I will. <laughs> and uh, we will see you whenever. Peace.